Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. For some reason the bongs aren't going off even though the introductory uh, Westminster chimes are. It is six o'clock on Tuesday the 21st of May, commemorating Helena and reading uh, the ordinary time evening prayer on Tuesday from the Church of England's Common Worship. So you'll find the words at the Church of England's website at Remus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device, and in the book, uh, evening prayer on Tuesday in the morning and evening prayer during the ordinary time section towards the beginning after the prayer during the day section. And it being commemoration, there aren't many adjustments, if any, to the standard running order as we remember Helena. I'll read something about her later, or at least a reading that's been provided by the Kindle edition celebrating the saints in her honour. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday. You may join by Zoom. Codes are on the Blind Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on that Facebook page. It stays there for a month. And the audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel. I was going to say forever, but I've just started deleting some very old ones. So, uh, <clears throat> for some while, at any rate. And, uh, yeah, you're welcome to join me in the building by Zoom. Uh, on the Blind Valley Church's website or on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel. Welcome, however you are joining us. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of mercy and truth. O God, will you not give us life again? That your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him, and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The Psalms appointed for this evening, 134 and 135. You will find the Psalter at the back of the book, 134 and 135. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary. And bless the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth, give you blessing out of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Alleluia. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, you servants of the Lord, you that stand in the house of the Lord, in the court of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Make music to his name, for it is lovely. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, and Israel for his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. The Lord does whatever he pleases in heaven and on earth, in the seas and in all the deeps. He brings up the clouds from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning with the rain, and brings the winds out of his treasuries. He smote the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn of man and beast. He sent signs and wonders into your midst, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and all his servants. He smote many nations and slew mighty kings, Sion king of the Amorites and Og the king of Bashan and all the kingdoms of Canaan. He gave their land as a heritage, a heritage for Israel his people. Your name, O Lord, endures forever and shall be remembered through all generations. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. 
the idols of the nations are but silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes have they but cannot see, they have ears but cannot hear, <clears throat> neither is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them shall become like them, and so will all who put their trust in them. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel, the house of Aaron, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi, you who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord from Zion, who dwells in Jerusalem. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Scrolling past our first reading, the Canticle, a song of the Holy City, turning back in the book's evening prayer, Tuesday, Ordinary Time. I saw the Holy City coming down out of heaven from God. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the Holy City, New Jerusalem, coming out down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them and they shall be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. The one who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might, for ever and ever. Amen. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. Before we turn to Job 2, this is from Kindle Edition of Celebrating the Saints, reading from the Ecclesiastical History of Socrates Scholasticus. Helena, the mother of the Emperor Constantine, being divinely directed by dreams, went to Jerusalem. She sought carefully the sepulchre of Christ, from which she, he arose after his burial, and after much difficulty, by God's help, she discovered it. What was the cause of the difficulty was, I will explain in a few words. Those who embraced the Christian faith, after the period of his passion, greatly venerated this tomb, but those who hated Christianity, having covered the spot with a mound of earth, erected on it a temple to Venus and set up her image there, not caring for the memory of the place. This succeeded for a long time and it became known to Helena. Accordingly, having caused the statue to be thrown down, the earth to be removed and the ground entirely cleared, she found three crosses in the sepulchre. One of these was that blessed cross on which Christ had hung. The other two were those on which the two thieves that were crucified with him had died. With these was also found the tablet of Pilate, on which he had inscribed, inscribed in various characters that the Christ who was crucified was king of the Jews. Since, however, it was doubtful which cross they were in search of, the emperor's mother was not a little distressed, but from this trouble the bishop of Jerusalem, Mar Macarius, shortly relieved her, and he solved the doubt by faith, for he sought a sign from God and obtained it. The sign was this, a certain woman of the neighbourhood neighborhood who had been long afflicted with disease was now just at the point of death. The bishop therefore arranged it so that each of the crosses should be brought to the dying woman, believing that she would be healed on touching the precious cross. Nor was he disappointed in his expectation for the two crosses ha having been applied, which were not the Lord's, the woman still continued in a dying state. But when the third, which was the true cross, touched her, she was immediately healed and recovered her former strength. In this manner was the genuine cross discovered. So to Job 2, our first by brooding several we, we have used liturgically. Uh, and the Psalms, Job chapter 2. Um, Job's in the wisdom section of the Hebrew Scriptures. Uh, it's called, the, oh no, it's not, it's called the poetry section they've got here. I'd call it the wisdom material. Um, so if you open your Bible halfway through, with both covenants in it, with the Hebrew Bible in the first part, and then the Greek Scriptures in the latter, about halfway through you should find the Psalms, immediately before that, uh, the book of Job. And we'll the large number two, in the margin, chapter 2, in the book of Job. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that people have they will give to save their lives, but stretch out your hands now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, he is in your power, only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. 
Job took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this Job did not sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard of all these troubles that had come upon him, each of them set out from his home, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, Zophar the Namathite, they met together to go and console and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they did not recognise him, and they raised their voices and wept aloud. They tore their robes and threw dust in the air upon their heads. They sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. <clears throat> so the continuation of the, and the development of the torment of Job. So it's only um, mentioned in passing here, but um, Job 1, if you want to read that, um, Satan is in the heavenly judgment throne room of God and uh, says, Job is only, um, only praises you, only looks out for you, only worships you because you've blessed him, take away his family um, and uh, he'll curse you. And um, God says to Satan, very well, very well. And um, we're now told that uh, he's allowed to attack his body, but only not take his life. And so he's got these um, loathsome sores from head to foot. Um, I'm just going to flip through to tomorrow, actually. So yes, maybe his wife survived, but his uh, children and all his property was destroyed. Just going to flip back to yesterday to make sure I'm... Uh... Yeah, so his wife is obviously still there, but yesterday all that other stuff happened to him. So his property and his family went to save his wife, and today his own body is interfered with. And it's um, either a literal story, if you'd like to take that way, or a metaphorical uh, but one way or another, um, the devil, Satan, is uh, tempting God to bring judgment on Job. And uh, wife says, curse God and die. He says, no. And then we see uh, the introduction of his three friends. They are foreigners, a Temanite, a Shuite, and a Namathite. So they're not Hebrew. I don't know whether that has any relevance or not, but this man is a God-fearing Hebrew. And uh, even though... His uh, family and property and wealth have been taken from him, even though his health has been taken from him. Nevertheless, he persists in uh, thanking God and saying, should we not receive good and bad uh, at God's hands? And it's very much a Jewish idea that God gives both good and bad. It's a Christian idea that God only gives good and the devil gives bad. And I tend to err on the Jewish way of thinking. Uh, if God is creator overall, then God is responsible for the good and the bad. And that gets us away from worrying why it is that Good people suffer, it seems to me. Um, but we've got this idea that there is, there is a test, there is a tension. There are good and bad powers, good and bad forces in our own lives, our own voices, but also in our communities and above, if that's where they are, the powers and principalities, um, uh, powers and thrones, wherever and however they are, whatever that means, <coughs> are acting and directing and uh, giving us choices and options uh, through which, in which God uh, is able to test us and just like the trees in the um, Garden of Eden in the second version of the creation story in Genesis um, our relationship with God would not be of any worth if we were simply automatons some say well if God is God and God tells you to do it you have to do it well actually we don't have to do it we face the consequences but it's like in any relationship um, it's only of the worth if we are free to leave that makes our staying even the more uh, worthy so to Romans 1 from 18, then our next reading, scroll on to that if you're following online, if you're following the Holy Bible, Romans um, comes uh, after Acts. So uh, if you open your Holy Bible uh, two-thirds of the way through, move towards the back of the book, you go past the four Gospels, then the book of Acts, and then you'll find the book of Romans. Within the book of Romans, we're looking for the large number one in the margin and uh, within chapter one the small numbers in the text are the verses we're going from verse 18 scroll on to it if you're following online for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of those who by their wickedness suppress the truth for what can be known about god is plain to them because god has shown it to them ever since the creation of the world his eternal power and divine nature invisible though they are 
have been understood and seen through the things he has made. So they are without excuse. Although they knew God, they did not honour him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling a mortal human being, or birds, or four-footed animals, or reptiles. Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the degrading of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed for ever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to degrading passions. Their women exchanged natural intercourse for unnatural, and in the same way also the men, giving up natural intercourse with women, were consumed with passion for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in their own persons the due penalty for their error. Since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind and to things that should not be done. They were filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, craftiness. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, rebellious towards parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, and ruthless. They know God's decree, but those that those who practice such things deserve to die. Yet they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. <clears throat> So the opening paragraph tells us that uh, we know that God is there, we know how to act towards God if we look at the world and nature around us. Um, and then we're told that despite that, um, people um, have not served God and uh, have just pleased themselves and gone after and done those things uh, which make them feel better. Um, and therefore um, they are filled with, and there's that great long list of wickedness, craftiness, they are boastful, faithless, etc., etc., etc. And uh, this is in the um, context of idol worshipping, claiming to be wise, they exchange the glory of immortal God for images. And uh, so it is in the worship of those, in those images that uh, people have become involved in lusts of their hearts, the grading of their bodies, women and men giving up natural intercourse, consumed with passion for one another. Um, men committing shameless acts. So it's been uh, assumed and interpreted historically that this means um, physical intimacy of uh, anything other than what would be deemed to be a normal um, sexual encounter. Um, but I think that is missing the point and limiting the context. And uh, in fact, at the time of writing, physicality was seen to be of no worth or no value. So Paul, we see, for example, says you do need to actually be careful about um, those people you have physical intimacy with uh, because you are attaching yourselves to them. There was a thought with that uh, Hellenistical Greek interpretation that only stuff of the mind and spiritual or um, academic, that was of worth, but anything the body did really didn't count or matter. Um, so, yes, I'm not sure that this... Um, this does mean um, what we would now call homosexuality, although that word has only developed relatively recently. I think that the things that do matter is that last paragraph, the deceit, strife, evil, wickedness, envy, etc., etc. Um, because the first part is this business, although nature has told us who God is, we as humanity have decided to worship nature, not the creator. And in the worship of nature, um, getting involved in fertility acts uh, in the worship of nature rather than um, temple worship and or um, the mass or the breaking of bread, which is true Christian worship. Um, shameless acts like the abomination that causes desolation in the temple. These are idols. These are worship and the worship of idols rather than anything to do with uh, physical intimacy, which, of course, for Jews is very important because it maintains and promotes their people and the number of their people. Um, so it's a great sin um, to spill one's seed, if I can put it like that euphemistically, uh, look up uh, Onan in the Hebrew scriptures. So, if we worship the true God, as nature is presented to us, this is the idea written here to those of a um, Gentile background coming to faith, uh, persuaded, being persuaded to go back to their Gentile um, community and worship patterns. This is to put if you, literally the fear of God into them, that they might serve the true God and worship um, around the... Um, table of the Lord and not going back to these impure ways of worshipping that which is false and not that which is true. So open my eye back to the responsory back in uh, evening prayer ordinary time on Tuesday. 
Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. The Song of Mary. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. <clears throat> Father, Son, Spirit, three in one, one in three. <clears throat> at the end of this day, we look back at those things that have been a blessing to us, and uh, we thank you for them, where we have been inspired and energised, where we have been uh, confirmed in the people we are and who we are, doing what we are. We thank you for that positivity, that safety, security that has given us. Unlike that which Job suffered, where he was tried and tested. So we pray for those who, like Job, are being mocked and ridiculed and excluded and brought low because of their faith or because of who they are. And that we pray that if that has been our lot, that uh, you may be merciful uh, towards us and uh, protect us through the night and give us the hope to face tomorrow uh, because of your love and grace and mercy towards us. Release International, we thank God that during a Release International visit to partners in Egypt last year, they were able to pray for a girl who had just been abducted and two hours later received news that she had been returned. Pray for many girls in Egypt who are not returned to their families. Turning to Christian Aid, scrolling through to uh, today's prayer prompt, we pray for Christian Aid's research, evidence and learning team uh, as that contributes to their um, initial response, their building of resilience, and their promoting of advocacy. Church of England's prayers for the Holy Land, God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you for all who suffer in the Holy Land today, for your precious children, Israelis and Palestinian, traumatised and in fear of their lives, for the families of the bereaved, for those who, having seen images, they will never, who have seen images they will never forget, for those anxiously waiting for news, despairing with each passing day. Joint Public Issues Team Prayer for Ukraine. God of all with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. Suffolk Diocese, we pray for our bishops, Martin and Mike. Martin, as he steps down, Mike, as he prepares to um, cover during the vacancy for uh, Ginny, our team vicar on the Vacancy and Sea Committee, as she makes her contribution to uh, seeking the sort of diocesan that we are looking for. And my hope and prayer is that they will support stipendary clergy the idea of cure of souls in parochial ministry and uh, the work of God's mission and ministry in the world and our seeking to engage with that in community. We pray too for our Archdeacon Rich, giving thanks for his service uh, year in. We pray that he will enable and direct him to um, carve out his time. We pray for Josh, who would be notified today, has stepped down as a dean and indeed as an Anglican minister. And we pray that you might bless him and his family, he might find uh, himself and a role in you. We thank you for his integrity and we pray that he might know your peace. And uh, within our diocesan prayers, we pray for Daniel and Simon, Trisha, who are clergy in Bures with Assington and Little Colnard parishes, and uh, Andrew and Sarah, who are readers, also any other people who minister with them, lay or ordained, and their treasurer's warden and secretaries. We pray for their uh, people on their electoral roll, the congregation, the communities, uh, and their schools. May they all be built up uh, in you and in one another to lead fulfilled and fruitful lives. We pray for our teachers across the county. Uh, we pray for those whose um, jobs are in jeopardy, for those who have moved into new roles with, or have taken on new responsibilities. We pray that we as a community will uh, recognise the value of teachers and uh, be prepared to pay through our taxes and uh, through our rates for decent schools and decent support networks. We pray that the value and worth of children will come before profits. We pray that our national government will recognise that also. We pray especially for um, 
pupil premium and um, special educational needs support and encouragement and uh, for those families that are chaotic and those who are privileged uh, may those children not suffer the adverse effects of such backgrounds and may the school take its place in supporting and encouraging them to develop resilience, self-worth, skills and abilities in sports, arts and uh, academic subjects. We pray for more action to be taken by governments to limit the rise in temperatures around the world. The climate crisis is already having a major effect in many nations. We pray that governments will do what they can to reduce quickly the use of fossil fuels. We pray that we, as their communities, will hold into account and demand that from them. We pray also that Japan will reverse its decision to begin whaling again. I forget whether the uh, Nordic countries have stepped down or whether they've stepped up. But, um, we might need to do that whole Greenpeace thing again and um, move people away from it. We pray too for... And compassionate farming, and for whichever country is that's farming octopuses to stop doing that too, and to change their minds there. We pray for the people and businesses associated with Walpole Road, Bramfield Road, London Road, Wissett Road, Norwich Road, Key Street, and Holton Road in Halesworth. Pray for those um, for whom life is a challenge at the moment, that where it would help them, they might come to faith, they would be aware of your presence. <coughs> and then we pray that church buildings, uh, this church building, um, and, and other Christian uh, contacts or friends will be a support to them in their circumstances. Pray for those in those addresses whom life is going well. May they turn to you with thanksgiving and indeed support uh, this church and other churches and the other charities and institutions around the town uh, to make that make our community what it is. And we pray for people and businesses based in or serving those addresses that they will thrive and prosper, making the right decisions um, to continue to be able to contribute good jobs and services to the local economy. We thank you for, all they, for our town council and also for all those organisations and those that were, that were and those that weren't uh, represented at that uh, sort of annual meeting afternoon contact time that uh, the council put on we thank you for them we pray for peter Moore, lee valerie daphne meyer cynthia jean felicity janet eileen david samantha charles iii rachel francis billy sue veronica helen jane princess of wales kate henry tracy andrew david molly leslie Junie, john and malcolm and any others we may know for whom life is a challenge at the moment we pray that you break through in sovereign grace, bringing healing, salvation and deliverance. We pray again that uh, spirituality and religious experience will be part of that uh, journey and healing process. We pray for those that walk with these, be they family, friends, neighbours, volunteers, professionals. They will have the right word to say at the right time. Unlike Job's comforters, which we will discover uh, over the days ahead, uh, were not as helpful as they might have been. And uh, we thank you for all that's good in the lives of Shirley, Sally, Tony, Olive, Jacqueline, Brian, Charles and Margaret and all others who have recently died. Special blessing for Jacqueline, um, who we laid to rest today. And uh, pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, those, who served, those who've served you faithfully here. And uh, Helene, who we remember today, I don't know whether it's her year's mind, but uh, we thank you for her um, promotion and rediscovery of, uh, or rediscovery and promotion of the holy sites in uh, the Middle East. <coughs> we ask that according to your promise to humanity, grant us with them a share in your return to the kingdom. Pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances. We pray that he, we will hear your inspired word spoken through your incarnate mouth by the breath of your spirit. And uh, that will bring light in our darkness and order in our chaos. Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. Habla <laughs> Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening and day is drawing to a close. Abide with us and with your whole church in the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of the world. Abide with us and with all your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. 
As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.